الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الله يامركم ان تؤدوا الامانات الى اهلها واذا حكمتم بين الناس ان تحكموا بالعدل ان الله نعم ما يعظكم به ان الله كان سميعا بصيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اطيعوا الله واطيعوا الرسول واولي الامر منكم فان تنازعتم في شيء فردوه الى الله والرسول ان كنتم تؤمنون بالله واليوم الاخر ذلك خير واحسن تاويلا الم تر الى الذين يزعمون انهم امنوا بما انزل اليك وما انزل من قبلك يريدون ان يتحاكموا الى الطاغوت وقد امروا ان يكفروا به ويريد الشيطان ان يضلهم ضلالا بعيدا فلا وربك لا يؤمنون حتى يحكموك فيما شجر بينهم ثم لا يجدوا في انفسهم حرجا مما قضيت ويسلموا تسليما صدق الله وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam First of all I would like to pay thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He gave us this opportunity to sit together in masjid and to have a talk about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then I will pay thanks to all of you that you invited us here for the said purpose. Respected brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this entire universe and he created human being and mankind as well he has subjected and subjugated the whole world to the humanity human being use and utilize the whole world for their own good and for their own benefit As you know my respected brothers and sisters one who has been given a status and position 
he has the duties and responsibilities as well. For example, someone told you that I got a position in a specific company. So that's not position only. That's a duty and responsibility. And that duty and responsibility must be fulfilled in accordance with the rules of the company concerned. If someone purposely violate the rules of the company and the boss as well, he would be fired. Or he would be taken to a court of law. He would be sued for the damages he caused to the company. In other words, punishment is logical and reasonable. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He has given us the status, and you know the status, if the company is very famous, and someone has got the status or the position of agent of that company, he will be proud of. I am the sales agent of such and such company. I am the manager of such and such company. But we, humans, we are the agent of the sole creator of the entire universe. And that's why we are called Khalifa or Khulafa. وَإِسْقَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to his angels, I'm going to appoint my agent in this world, the human being, the mankind. Now what a status. I am not the agent of a company belong to our President Barack Hussein Obama. Or a company belongs to Dick Cheney or somebody else. I am the agent of the sole creator of the entire universe. This is a status. This is a position. But as you know, the status is the highest. The responsibility is the dick. Otherwise, you will be the loser. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I swear by the time, by Asr, by Zamana, by Dahar, by history. Because without human, time means nothing. Time did not have any price and value. As long as human beings were not there. When the human God created by Allah, time became precious. And that's why now we say, time is money. That's a concept adopted by the human, created by the human and adopted by the human. So it means, that history is actually human history, or that's human life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has made the human history as a witness to jawab e qasam wal asr. I swear by the human history, innal insana la fi khusr. Indeed, human beings, they are in a big loss. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, all human beings, they are in a big loss. But exceptions are there. إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر. But not those who followed the four point agenda given by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. We call it four point agenda. This will make your life here and in the hereafter. This will make you satisfied here in this life and in the hereafter. This will give you a mental peace and tranquil here and a prosperity in the hereafter. And what is that four point agenda? It includes every aspect of human life. Illa lazina amanu. As you know, that it starts with its root. And root is the faith and belief. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Humans are in a big loss. Illa lazina amanu. But not those who believed firmly, who believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the message he has sent, firmly. And when somebody, he believes in Allah, and in his rules or message, very firmly, 
So he will never do anything wrong. He will never violate the rule of Allah. So that's why Allah said, وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And they practice the righteous good deeds. To tell you one important point, that everywhere in Holy Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Iman and true faith, right after that, He mentions Al-A'mal al-Saliha. He mentions righteous good deeds, noble practices. Why? Because these are the requirements of your Iman. When you are a woman, you believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, lip service will never work. As far as the case of your heart is concerned, it is known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As far as your words are concerned, if it does not have a support from outside, that would be considered only a lip service. So what's the support in this regard? Yes, your life would be studied. What you are doing 24-7, day and night, according to Quran and Sunnah, now your words is not a lip service. You have spoken and you have declared their shahada from the bottom of your heart. And as you know, wait. Inna al-kalam ala fil fu'adi wa innama. An Arabic poet, he said, Inna al-kalam ala fil fu'adi wa innama. Ju'ila al-lisanu ala fu'adi dalila. Actual words, concepts and ideas that is there in hearts and minds. You express the ideas. In hearts and minds, by your tongue. If your heart does not believe a thing, and you express the same, that is called munafaka. That is called hypocrisy. Yes, the person concerned, in American terminology, would be called a man having double faces. Yes? And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in a hadith narrated by Imam Bukhari, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنَّا شَدَّ النَّاسِ عَذَابًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ الَّذِي يَكُونُ ذَا الْوَجْهِينَ يَلْقَى هَذَا بِوَجْهٍ وَهَذَا بِوَجْهِ أَوْ كَمَا قَالَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ The severe punishment on the day of judgment will be for that one who has two faces. He meets this guy with one face and that guy with another face. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of, you, all of us. Amen. Say Ameen. Amen. And to tell you one thing my respected brothers, sometime in my classes to my brothers and sisters there in Granada Hills, sometime I do tell them that to me if you will ask me, on positive side, a true believer he is a man. A true believer? He is a man. He is a man. On negative side, a true disbeliever he is a man also. Yes, but someone who is neither on this side nor on that side, he is neither a man nor a woman, he is nothing. Yes, and I told them that to me, Abu Bakr was a man. Razi Allah ta'ala han. Umar was a man. Razi Allah ta'ala han. Osman was a man. Razi Allah ta'ala han. Ali was a man. Razi Allah ta'ala han. On negative side, Abu Jahl was a man also. He was a man of his word, even at the time of his death. But there is a third guy. His name is Abdullah ibn Ubayy ibn Salul, Rayyusul Munafiqeen, the head and chief of the hypocrites, standing behind Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in first sub. And whenever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said salam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, that guy, that shaitan, used to stand up, addressing the people of Madina and the muhajireen from Mecca, Mandallahu alayna. قَدْ وُلِدَ بِمَكَّةِ وَحَاجَرَ إِلَيْنَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done a favor to us. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is born at Mecca, but he is migrated to Medina. What a blessing we have. And the moment that shaitan guy went out of masjid, he was telling people, how we will get rid of this musibah. Muhammad is a musibah, he is a problem. How we will get rid of this problem? So, now, that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, الَّذِي يَكُونُ الزَّلْوَجْهِينَ يَلْقَى هَذَا بِوَجْهِنْ وَهَذَا بِوَجْهِنْ And to tell you one thing, my respected brothers and sisters, wait, a moment, a true believer, a true believers, they are the cordial friends of each other. Yes? If they are not cordial friends, they should think of their iman. 
Yes, sometimes I do tell them in points I do mention in tafsir or in hadith class or in Islamic philosophy or anywhere to uh, uh, my brothers and sisters. So I tell them that look, if Muslims are in love with each other, it means they do follow Islam. If they are not in love with each other, so they should think about their Islam and their Iman. Yes, and I told them that look, Quran, the holy book, the great blessing of Allah, the final message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, holy Quran, it will unite the Muslim Ummah. If Quran did not unite the Muslim Ummah, it means that the Ummah does not follow the holy Quran. You know what I'm saying? Otherwise, وَاَتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَا حُفْرَةٍ مِّنَ النَّارِ فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِّنْهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says hold firmly the rope of the deen of Allah and in a hadith Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in reference to holy Quran he said وَهُوَ الزِّكْرُ الْحَكِيمُ وَهُوَ الصِّرَاطُ الْمُسْتَقِيمُ وَهُوَ حَبْلُ اللَّهِ الْمَتِينُ رَوَاهُ الدَّارِمِ Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that this Quran is a reminder or admonition which is full of wisdom Every single word of Holy Quran is full of wisdom. wisdom. We do make this dua time and again. Now, in our other prayer, we made this dua four times. Imam Sahib, Brother Ashraf, he recited Surah Al-Fatiha in our four rakats. Yes, and those who do follow Imam Shafi, Ahmad ibn Hanbal and Imam Malik, Rahimahumullah, they recited the same. We Hanafiya, we are free. We are standing behind him, calm and quiet. <laughs> yes, that our leader is there. So anyhow, my respected brothers and sisters, yes, we are in cricket, yes. <laughs> so respected brothers and sisters in Islam, we recited this dua four times in these four rakat. In every single rakat of four prayer, we do recite that dua, ehdina sirat al-mustaqeem. Yes, keep us going on sirat al-mustaqeem. Ehdina sirat al-mustaqeem. Establish us on sirat mustaqim Because I told these brothers and sisters in tafsir class, when you are praying, you are a Muslim, yes, and you do ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ihdina sirat al mustaqim O Allah, guide us to the straight path and to the right path. You are, that's why you are praying. So what you are asking for? So one answer is, that in every single minute and second in our life, we do need the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to keep us going on straight path. Otherwise, on every single step of your Satan is standing there, he is trying to avert you. He is trying to take you to an exit either to right or to the left. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Holy Quran, when Allah ordered Satan to prostrate to our great grandfather Adam, alayhi salatu was salam, he didn't. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He asked him, Ma manahaka an tasjud? What has stopped you? What was the harder, what was the, 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 the cause that you did not prostrate to Adam? Why you did not? So he said, Ana khairun minu. I am better than him. A better one should not prostrate to someone who is lower in category, who is lower in status. Yes. And he argued with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He mentioned the reason why I am better than him. خَلَقْتَنِي مِن نَارٍ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِن تِينٍ You created me from fire. The fire flames, it goes up. It goes up. And the mud, if you will throw it with full power, it will come down. So his material, we call it khamir. Yes, the very origin, that is the lowest category. My origin is the highest one. And in mud, there is darkness. But in nar and fire, there is light. So light is much more better than darkness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi says, Awwalu man qasa bi tariqin batilin iblis. The one who made a bad qiyas, who made a bad qiyas that was iblis, we call it al-qiyas al-fasid. Or al-qiyas bil wujuh al-fasid in Islamic jurisprudence, when we discuss the qiyas as a fourth source of Islamic Sharia, so we classify it to two categories. Yes, al-qiyas al-shari, 
القياس الباطل الغير الشرعي so القياس غير الشرعي where the reason is not a reason you are trying to make it a reason so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this qiyas of your this reasoning of your let's say bottle null and white so fakhruj min hafa inna karijim get out of this garden you are the rejected one so now the satan he made a dua qala fa anzirni ila yawm yub'asun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can you please give me a time until the last day of this universal system not to cause me a death to stand still until the last day of this universal system Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said fa inna ka minal munzari ila yawm il waqt al ma'lum yes you have been given the time you will be living in this world until the last day of this world the end universal system now when he got it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know that Allah is such an entity the creator that he does not change his mind he does not change it and only to make you to understand someone we are giving him credit so we say he is a man of his word he is a man of his word yes American terminology is working other way around yes I was thinking but I changed my mind so brother what is this you are not a man why you are not committed to your tongue why you are not committed to your words so respected brothers and sisters in Islam now that is Allah and takhallaku bi akhlaq Allah in hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says have the character like that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you know in a hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says Imam Tirmidhi narrates rahimahullah inna lillah tis'atan wa tis'ina isman here yes you have this word Allah is written there 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are written there even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have only 99 names Imam Sayyuti rahmatullahi alayhi he has gathered together more than 1,000 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But regarding these 99, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that actually these 99 names include all the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Got it? Like the word Allah, which is the proper name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is not a quality name. That's a proper name. Like my name is Fadrullah. Yes, now qualities, somebody is called me Imam Sahib, another one is called Maulana Sahib, a third one is called Mufti Sahib, a fourth one is called Qadi Sahib, a fifth one is called Sheikh Sahib, or as the case may be. So that is quality names, or these are attributes. Now, Allah is the proper name of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. A very well known Imam, even though that Aqaid wise and faith wise he was a Mu'tazili, but in Arabic grammar, or in Arabic sarf and nahw, he is our Imam. We call him Imam Sibwe. We call him Imam Sibwe. He is Mu'tazili, but he is our Imam. But anyhow, when he passed away, so one of his students saw him in his dream. Saw him? In his dream. That what happened to you? He said, I got forgiven. He said, how? For your work? In dream? He said, only for one thing. He said, what is that? He said that Allah is very play, pleased with that work of mine in grammar. In what? In Arabic grammar. He said, what's that? Qala biqawli bi'alamiyyatillah. Biqawli bi'alamiyyatillah. Because of my belief that Allah is not the quality name of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why you cannot make a plural for Allah. And you cannot make an ismul musaghar for Allah. There is no ismul tasghir for Allah. Yes, like, my name is Fadlullah. So just take the first part of my name, Fadl. Yes, Fadl, the blessing, the grace. Yes, if you want to make it, it's uh, Musaghar. So you will say Fudel. You will say Fudel, a small grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now regarding Allah, you cannot do this thing. Neither you can pluralize it. Now you can make an ism musaghar. It means that that is the proper name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Got it? So respected brothers and sisters in Islam. Anyhow, my point was that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna lillah tis'atan wa tis'ina isman. Indeed, Allah has 99 names. Man hafizaha dakhala al-jannah. Whosoever memorized it, 
he will enter paradise. Whosoever will me- if somebody will memorize the whole book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for sure he cannot go to paradise as long as he is not practicing. As long as Rubbakari Yakra ul Quran wal Quran Yalhanuhu. Aw kama kala alayhi salatu wa salam. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam says most of the time somebody will be reciting Quran and that Quran will be cursing him. If you are the guy, you are reciting me, you are not practicing accordingly, you are making a fun of me, you are joking and mocking at me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive and forbid say Amin. Respected. You are okay with me or not? Yes. So when I say say Amin, so just say a little bit loud. Yes, because we are looking for Amin only. Our practice is not that good to go to Jannah. Yes, we are looking towards our dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us. Yes? Sometimes I do make a joke in this with these students of mine that on the day of judgment, inshallah, yes, we will try to say to Allah that, oh Allah, we are the followers of Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, as Brother Ashraf and you brothers invited me here, so my brothers came with me. So you never stop any one of them that you are not invited. Because you are here with Shaykh. So on the day of judgment, we will be saying to Allah, Oh Allah, we are with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Okay, then you are my guest. Come inside. <laughs> so we will go to paradise inshallah. So respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Anyhow, Inna lillahi tis'atan wa tis'ina isman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has 99 names. Man hafizaha dakhal al-jannah. Whosoever may memorize it like this, who Allah la ilaha illa anta ya Allah, ya Rahmanu, ya Rahim, ya Maliku, ya Quddusu, ya Salamu, ya Mu'minu, ya Muhaymanu, ya Azizu, ya Jabbaru, ya Mutakabir, ila akhirihi. I'm not practicing. These names will never take me to paradise. Man hafizaha. It means you should have the reflections of the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One name of Allah is Rahman. You should have Rahman and mercy in your heart. Yes. Yes, one name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Ghaffar and Ghafoor. You should have forgiveness. Yes, if you got involved with a weak man in any dispute, Ya subhanallah, and you have beaten him to his death even, you have the reflection of the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For a strong man, everybody will say, I forgive him. But for a weak one, you should let choke him. This is not Iman. The weak one, forgive him for the sake of Allah. So, and the strong one, just handle him properly. That will be Iman. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam. Anyhow, man hafizaha, to have the reflection and inhikas of the attributes of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. To tell you one thing, respected brothers and sisters. Now you know, Jazakallah. You just put it there. Oh. As you know, that we the Muslims, all over the world, nowadays, we are passing through a very crucial time. Yes? All over the world. Everywhere, Muslims got killed. Either amongst themselves or by their enemies. Yes, we received an email from somewhere. These brothers, they are receiving email and questions and then I do answer. So one, the same brother, he was like from his words and from his uslub and context, I came to know that he is crying. That's what's going on with Muslims all over the world. And he said that, Sheikh, can you tell us what will be the way out from these difficulties? So I told him, At-tawajjuh ilallah. At-tawajjuh ilallah. To make a U-turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are either going on reverse from Allah or even we are going in opposite direction. Tarsam ke narasi bakaba e arabi ki raki tumi ravi batukistanas. Imam Saadi says that I saw someone in Russia. He was going to the east. He was going? From Turkestan? He was going to the east. I asked him, Brother, where are you going? He said, I'm going to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to perform hajj. At that time, aircraft was not available. People were walking on foot or riding on camels. Yes, it used to take time. So I said, ke tarsam ke narasi bakaba e arabi ki raki tumi rabi. But Turkestan is the way you are going, it will lead you to Turkestan. Any step you are taking, it will take you far for one step from the house of Allah because your direction is other way around. So first of all, you should make a U-turn and then you should start walking. So respected brothers and sisters, 
the Muslim Ummah from all around the world, they are bound to make a U-turn. They are bound to make a, we are in love in matter and materials. Man kana yuridu al-ajila, ajalna lahu fiha ma nasha, liman nureed, summa jahalna lahu jahannam, yaslaha mazmumun madhura. ومن أراد الآخرة وسعى لها سعيها وهو مؤمن فأولئك كان سعيهم مشكورا الله سبحانه وتعالى says people are of two categories are of two types those who are thinking of worldly attachment day and night they are thinking of worldly attachment day and night everybody is trying to be as rich as Mr. Bill Gates you know Bill Gates Yes, he's our cousin. Yes. He's the cousin of everyone who is using computer. Anybody who is using computer, he's the cousin of Mr. Bill Gates. But I told them that Prophet says that the name of every individual has a reflection on his personality as well. So I said that this is very much true regarding Bill Gates. Regarding? Because his name is Bill Gates. So all the bills may be of $100 or $10 or $20 as the case may be, it's going into his pocket from all around the world. That's the reflection of his name. So everybody is trying to be rich as the Bill Gates. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man kana yuridu al My Arabian brothers, yes. These two brothers are there. Yes. Any other Arab? Yes. Huh? Who? No, he's not. Okay. Brother Ashraf is from Arabistan. Yes. He's from Dhaka. Dhaka is in Saudi Arabia. So anyhow. Huh? Oh, close to Saudi Arabia. So anyhow, respected brothers and sisters in Islam, in Arabic language or in Arabic grammar, when Fede Muzari has a prefix of Kana, so that is called past continuous tense. Man Kana Yuridul Ajila. Who has been intending and who has been demanding and wanting, uh, wanting this dunya or the world the attachment. So it need, it means that people are constantly working for this dunya. Man kana yuridu al-ajila. Kana yuridu. Yuridu is fele muzare. Yes. Kana is prefixed to. So now, it will give us the meaning of past tense or madi istimrari had been doing. Man kana yuridu al-ajila. And that's why I tell my brothers and sisters in Tafsir class that every single kalima in Holy Quran says that this is a miracle. Nobody can say a word like that of Holy Quran. وَإِنَّ لَهُ الْحَلَاوَةَ وَلِكَلِمَاتِهِ الْتَلَاوَةَ وَلَا يَخْلَقُ بِكَثْرَةِ الرَّدِ وَلَا تَنْقَذِ عَجَائِبُهُ Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, If you will have the sense, so you will have the taste of every single kalim of Holy Quran. Yes, you will be saying that I read and recite, but I don't have any taste of Holy Quran. I listen to, but I don't have any taste of Holy Quran. So it means that your sense is not working properly. Yes, you know there is somebody who has a problem of uh, malaria. Malaria is a type of fever. Yes, which cover you have? Tongue. Test is where? The tongue. That is the sense. Yes, so it's covered with that yellow stuff. Your tongue. You will put honey in the mouth of such a person, he does not feel it that that is sweet. Because, yes, honey is sweet. Honey is sweet. He does not have it because he is sick. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring us out of that sickness, then you will be having the taste of every single kalim of Holy Quran. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, by God, to tell you the truth in the house of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever I'm talking about Quran and Sunnah, whenever I'm teaching Quran and Sunnah in my masjid, every, I have the taste of every single kalima. Yes, and my only request our question, our dua from Allah is that oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep me with Quran and Sunnah until my last moment. So respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَإِنَّ لَهُ لَحَلَاوَةً وَلِكَلِمَاتِهِ طَلَاوَةً وَلَا تَنْقَذِ عَجَائِبُهُ وَلَا يَخْلَقُ بِكَفْرَةِ الرَّدِ Its interpretation, it will never have an end. As you know, that these are the words of Allah. We call it Kalamullah. We call it Kalamullah. And Kalam of Allah means the words of Allah, the speech of Allah, the Kalam of Allah, the entity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unlimited. The entity of Allah does have any limits? 
There is unlimited entity. Same is the case of his qualities. His qualities are also unlimited. You cannot prescribe a limit to the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he hears for how long? Yes, the whole California. But what about Nevada then? He cannot listen to voices from Nevada? Yes, what about Kandahar then Afghanistan? He cannot listen? No, you cannot put any limit to the quality of Allah subhanahu like his entity. Same is the case of his kalam. Holy Quran, when you will be explaining that, it does not have any end and that's why Ibn Abbas says that in paradise there will be classes of the tafsir of Holy Quran. The actual meaning is we will find out there that what this word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did mean. As you know that there are mutashabihat. There are mutashabihat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Yadullahi fawqa edihim. The hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is over the upon their hands. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a jariha or an organ like that of ours. Does he has a, 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 a hand like that of ours? So what it means? So there are two points of views in this regard. Number one, Tawlul Muhaddisin. And uh, uh, number two, Tawlul Ahl Sunnah al Baqin. Tawlul Muhaddisin, so they say, Tanzih ma'at Tafwiz. And Ahl Sunnah, other Ahl Sunnah, Ahl Hadith also they are Ahl Sunnah. By Ahl Hadith we do mean Imam Shafi, Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Imam Malik, Sufyan Sauri. Sufyan ibn Uyena, Qazi ibn Abi Layla, Rahimahumullah. So these are the ayyamma of Ahlul Hadith of that time. So they say, Tanzih ma'at tafwiz. The hand of Allah is over or upon their hands. So they say, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means by hand, Allah knows. Leave it to Allah. In paradise, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will tell us what it means. Got it? So respected brothers, and sisters in Islam, Inna lillahi tis'atan wa tis'ina isman. He has 99 names. Man hafizaha, dakhala al-jannah. Memorization, not only by words, you should have the reflection. Allah Ar Salam, he has written a book. In that book, he is talking about the fall of Islamic word. What? The fall of Islamic word, sometime back, we were the rulers. Yes? We were the leaders. Yes? yes. Say? Yes. yes. And now? Yes. We are the ruled one. We are not the rulers. We are what? Rule. The ruled one. The rulers are coming and ruling us. Why? Gawadi hamne jo aslaf se miras paayi thi. Allama says, Ke gawadi hamne jo aslaf se miras paayi thi. Surayya ne zami par asma se hamko de mara. تجھے آبا سے اپنی کوئی نسبت ہو نہیں سکتی کہ وہ کردار تو گفتار وہ ثابت تو سیارہ اور وہ علم و فضل کی موتی کتابیں اپنے آبا کی جو دیکھے ان کو یورپ میں تو دل ہوتا ہے سی پارا what your ancestors did what your grandfathers did yes today I was talking to one brother so I told him that yes last night that you are a mathematician or you are a graduate in mathematics. And I told him that the whole world say that Muslims, they do not know mathematics. So we must give a due importance to mathematics subjects because mathematics is actually the invention of Muslims. Abu Musa al-Khawarzami. Now the whole world is based upon algebra wal maqabala Ya algebra. What? Algebra. You have to put arqam instead of numbers. Yes. In the place of numbers you are putting what? Yes. So anyhow, respected brothers and sisters, I told him that Abu Musa al-Khawarzami, the one who found out zero, otherwise if we do not have zero, we cannot count even. We cannot count. Zero itself does not have any value, but all the values of every single figure is because of zero. Yes, and uh, I was making a joke. Somebody asked me, that if there is only one muqtadi with imam so somebody told me that he should stand to his left side to his left side I say no the proper sunnah is to stand one step behind him huh? yes uh, 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 mean what is this 
toes. Yeah, the toes. His toes should be in the line with the heels of the Imam. Got it? Because one Imam and one Muqtadi. And he should stand to the right side of Imam Ibn Abbas Sayyidah and he was a teenager. Ibn Abbas was a teenager. His mother Sayyidah Umm Al-Fazl radiyallahu ta'ala anha, she was in love with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was the auntie of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, and sometime when Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was passing through very crucial time in Mecca. And sometime the wicked people they used to throw trash on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sayyidah Umm Al-Fazl radiyallahu ta'ala anha, she saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she said, Ya Rasulullah, come here. And then, she was cleaning the dresses of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I cooked a little bit food, you should eat it. So Sayyidah Umm Al-Fazl was the mother of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala an and her other sister, Sayyidah Maimuna radiyallahu ta'ala anha, she is our mother. She is our mother, the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Umm Al-Mumineen. So Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, since his teenage, he was in love with Rasulullah and in love with Deen. So he said that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had a few wives, yes, and he used to stay every night with one of his wives. So he said that I have marked my calendar, that what night is, uh, will be in the, uh, in the house of my auntie, Maimuna, the sister of my mother. So that night I used to go and stay in the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And for what? To watch what he is doing at home. What is his practices and deeds and actions at home? And number two, that at the Hajjur time, I used to wake up early and to arrange water for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, putting it in a lota or in a pot. And when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he woke up for the Hajjur, he woke up for the Hajjur, and he came out. The first thing Sayyidah Aisha said, Prophet Sallallahu was waking at night. So the first thing he was starting with, it was Miswak. It was what? Miswak. Prophet Sallallahu was going to bed, doing Miswak. Oh, yes, waking up. Yes. From medical point of view, how important that practice is. If you have eaten your food, and still you have the parts of that food in your mouth, and you will, uh, uh, you will go to sleep. Yes, what will happen to that? It will become a poison. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to, yes, to use miswag before going to bed. And the moment he woke up, so he started with miswag, respected brothers and sisters. So Sayyid ibn Abbas, Sayyidina ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala han, he says that I used to have the lota and the towel, the pot and the towel in my hand. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came out, I said, Ya Rasulullah. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once Looked at my auntie Maimuna, she was behind Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she say, he said, Maimuna said yes, Ibn Abbas did it. And he arranged it. So ya subhanallah, at midnight, what time? At midnight, at the time of tahajjud, which is the time of ijaba, at the time of kabuliya, at the time of the acceptance of dua, because at that time Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, yes, yandir rabbi, Azza wa Jalla, kulla laylatin ila samayi dunya. My Lord comes down to this closest heaven every day after midnight. Every night after midnight. Fayakul, hal min mustaghfir fa'aghfir Allah. Is there anyone who is asking for forgiveness so I will forgive him? Hal min sa'ilin fa'u'tiyahu su'ala. Is there anyone who is asking for anything? I am very much ready to give it to him. Hal min kaza, hal min kaza. Is there anybody like this, like this, like this? So I will give him. So that was the time of ijaba. And especially when Rasulullah sallallahu will make a dua. What do you think? That would be accepted or rejected? Accepted. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he looked at the heaven and he said, اللهم فقه في الدين وعلمه القرآن اللهم فقه في الدين وعلمه القرآن اللهم فقه في الدين وعلمه القرآن والله سبحانه وتعالى make him to understand the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and teach him the Holy Quran now whenever we are explaining the book of Allah so we say what Ibn Abbas says regarding this ayah or what Ibn Abbas he is authentic authority and we call him رئيس المفسرين we call him he was a young man he was a young in his 20s in the time of Abu Bakr, in the time of Umar, in the time of Usman and Ali, Rizwanullah alayhi majma'een, all of them, they used to have him sitting beside them. 
the young men, major sahabas were there. Yes, great people were there. Yes, one said now, Omar radiallahu ta'ala said, that why I am making him sitting beside me, because of his knowledge in Quran and Sunnah. That is his knowledge, that is his wisdom, which has given him that much importance in the eyes of every single Sahabi. Abu Bakr used to ask him, I do ask him, that Ibn Abbas, what this ayah says? What this hadith says? Respected brothers and sisters in Islam. So anyhow, Inna lillahi, tis'atan wa tis'ina isman. Allama Arsalan, he says, date, the Muslim world is passing through a crucial time. They have lost their dignity. They have lost their honor and their respect. People are looking and staring at them. Oh, the, sometime back also people were looking at us, but as rulers and leaders of the world. Sabak Parpir, Sadaqat ka, Adalat ka, Shujaat ka. Three things must be there. Allama says, Muslims must have three qualities. Sabak Parpir, Sadaqat ka, Adalat ka, Shujaat ka. Liya jayega tuch se kaam dunya ki imamat ka. Number one, truthfulness. Do we speak truth? Ya subhanallah. And especially, living here in America and Western world, what a plea we do take. How Satan misguides us. Oh, this is non-Muslim country. Doesn't matter if you are telling lies. Doesn't matter if you are doing something other. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'oon. If you have defrauded a Muslim, he will blame you. If he will defraud a Muslim, huh? he will blame you. But if you will defraud a non-Muslim, he will blame your faith. He will blame your being. He will blame Islam that that's how the Muslims are. <coughs> they are fraudulent people. They are doing fraud. So why you are bringing a bad name to your being? Here you are not only to earn dollar. Here you are the ambassador of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In non-Muslim country, you are the ambassadors of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In a hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لا يحل لمسلمين يؤمنوا بالله واليوم الآخر أن يسكن بين الزهران المشركين This is not okay for a Muslim to live in a non-Muslim majority area. Someone who believes in Allah, someone who believes in the day of judgment, he should not live somewhere where the non-Muslim culture is dominant. Otherwise you will lose your own and you will adopt theirs. That's what's going on. What about our kids? They say, Assalamu alaikum, alaikum salam. Hi, bye. Yes, but uh, sometime back in Pakistan, in Peshawar, in Peshawar, as you know that people have a lot of questions. So some brothers asked me, can you, in a summarized way, can you please tell us that how is American life? Yes, so I told them, yes, that American life is running between two words, or two terms. They said, what do you mean? So I said, in manners or in etiquette? In manners? Are in etiquette, their life is running between high by. <laughs> yes, and the second important thing, that's economics. That's what? Finance or economics. So that is running also between two words, higher fire. <laughs> so it means that the whole life here is high by and high and fire. <laughs> so the culture is dominant. So you will lose your if you will not teach your own kids the Islamic culture. The Muhammadan culture, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The culture of Quran and Sunnah. So sometime later, they will be not aware of what Allah said. What Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. So because of the dominance of their culture, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, you will be losing your identity. You will be losing what? Say, you are right. Now look, sometime back, if all those brothers who are sitting here, here, don't take me wrong, don't take me wrong, and they have shaved their beard. Yes, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive Allah first say, Ameen. It doesn't mean that one who has beard, he is the friend of Allah, and one who has shaved it, he is not. No, Allah knows better. Yes, and sometimes I do make joke, that on the day of judgment, you will see a few bearded people, they would be taken by the angels to the hellfire. That they were undercover agents of shaitan. They were undercover agents of shaitan. Yes, under this cover, 
they were making frauds. People were putting their trust in that he is a bearded guy. He is coming to masjid five times a day. But what about his muamalat and transactions? What about his business? What about his daily practices? There is other way around. And Asar, it is said that Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala no. A case was brought to Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala an. So the Mudai, he was asked for evidence that you have claimed something. So do you have any proof and evidence in this regard to prove your dava, to prove your claim? So he said, yes, I have two witnesses. He said, bring them forth. When they came to the front, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala says, Arif Haza, I know this one, he's a nice guy. I know this one, that's called Tazkiyat al-Shahid. Tazkiyat al-Shahid means to approve a witness that he's okay. That's up to the court. That if the court wants to reject a Shahid, that I'm not going to accept the Shahada of this one. Because he has all the right to reject it. That I know, he, he has a record. This guy has? He has a record. So when he has the record, how I can put my trust in him that he is not telling lies? Get out of here. That's called Tazkiyat al-Shuhud. So if the Qazi and the judge is not satisfied with the witnesses, yes, or he doesn't know that what type of person he is, so then he should ask the Muzakki. And Muzakki is someone, Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi says, that he should send someone from his court to the masjid that brother is coming to. Yes, and that uh, messenger of the court will ask brother Ashraf, here is one man, his name is so and so, his father's name is so and so. He is uh, from Pakistan, coming to your masjid. What type of person he is? Then he will ask another one. Yes, he will write it down that Mr. So and so said like this. Mr. So and so said like this. Mr. So and so said like this. He will take the report to the court. And the judge, if he is satisfied, then in next hearing, he will accept the statement of that shahid. That's called tazkiyat al-shuhud. In fact, that's called, in Islamic jurisprudence, that's called tazkiyat al-shuhud. So Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala says, Amma haza fa'arifuhu. This one I know, walakin la arifu haza. This other brother, I don't know. Yes, I know his name. His name is like this. His father's name is like this. But I don't know him as far as his businesses and daily life is concerned. I'm not very much aware of that what type of person he is. So he asked the people sitting around, Hal yarifuhu minkum ahadun? Is there anyone who knows this guy? So one brother said, Sir, I know him. He said, Yes, just come forward. How do you know him? He said, Arifuhu, yusalli as salawat al khams. I know him that he prays five times a day. I know him that he prays five times a day. And he fasts in the month of Ramadan. And sometimes he helps the poor and needy. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala no, He asked him, Hal jawartahu, have you ever lived in his neighborhood? You have ever been living in his neighborhood? He said, La. No. Then he asked him, Hal amaltahu, have you got involved with him in any business and transaction? Sale and purchase? He said, no. Kala hal safar tamahu tadilan? Have you gone on a long travel and journey with that guy? So he said, no. So Sayyidina Umar Radhiwatana says, these three are the only ways you can find out the personality of someone. If you are living in his neighborhood, you can find out what type of neighbor he is. If you have got involved with him in any business and transaction, you can know him what type of person he is. If you have gone on a long journey and traveled with him and especially to Hajj, Brother Ashraf, Inshallah brothers are going or not? Yes, but I was telling Brother Ashraf that we are trying, yes, to have such an agent who can give us a good deal. Who can give us a good deal. And uh, we have one brother from Egypt, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him. That he is giving us a good deal, so we were asking him that please give us a place for 100 people. He said, I don't have that many, I will give you only 50. So as brother Ashraf and his brother, they were with us last year. So I told him that if somebody wants, so they should give their names to 
one of our responsible brothers, and all of us we are volunteers. I am a volunteer sheikh, and my two friends, Brother Pervez and Brother Inam Qadri, they are our volunteer workers in this regard on behalf of Islamic Charter of Maatrej. We have nothing to do with that business. Business is that of the agent, but we are looking some good deal for our brothers. Yes, so that is the good side of that uh, trip of Hajj. But I should not say the bad, but the hard side of that trip is that I am not sparing the group to waste their time in bazaars. Yes, so I keep them busy in ibadah. That come on, what we should do now? And what will we be doing? Because Hajj is such a complicated type of worship that even the ulama, they get confused when they go there. Yes, they get confused that what should I do now? Yes, but one alim, his name is Allama Ali Qari al-Hiravi, rahimahullah. He is a very well-known scholar of Quran and Sunnah and a very great faqih. In every aspect of Sharia, he has written books. Allama Qari al-Hiravi, and he was a teacher in Harami Makki, rahimahullah, some 800 years before. So respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Allama Qari al-Hiravi, he has a famous book regarding Hajj and that is called Kitab al-Manasik. That's called Kitab al-Manasik. So he has written all the details of Hajj and Umrah in that book. But he himself, what happened to him? He came for Umrah. It was raining. Yes, a big rain like running cats and dog. Yes. So it was a big rain. Nobody was there. So he was the only one making tawaf uh, at midnight. Yes. So he was making tawaf other way around. <laughs> Actually tawaf is anti-clockwise. But he was making it clockwise. So somebody rushed to him from shed. And he said, Brother, what are you doing? I was looking at you. I was thinking that you are going somewhere, but you are... He said, I am making tawaf. Now I arrived. So I want to make tawaf and to do my umrah, then to take a rest. So he said, but you are doing wrong, tawaf is not this way. Tawaf is this way. Tawaf is this way. And when you were coming to Hajj, why you have not studied the Kitab al of Allama Ali Qari? <laughs> yes. So Allama Qari said that I got ashamed of myself. <laughs> So that is a complicated type of ibadah. In a sense, lot of rush. Yes, hustle and bustle. Pushing and pulling. And as you know, respected brothers and sisters, we the Muslims are less sensible, more emotional. That I'm true? Less sense. We do not use our sense. We apply and implement our emotion everywhere. Even in ibadah. Even? In ibadah. Now look. Prayer five times a day. That is faraz, wajib, sunnah, or mustahab. That is faraz. That is what? Faraz. And taraweeh in Ramadan, that is faraz, wajib, or sunnah. That is sunnah. But you will see people in Ramadan. How many of them they are coming to massages? For sunnah. So what happened to faraz then? You know, it means that we are emotional. We are not sensible. We do not use our sense. We do use our emotion. Same thing happens there in Hajj. Ya subhanallah. Brother Ashraf knows, Brother Fahim, and all these brothers uh, uh, who, who went for Hajj with us, that when I teach them any further more practice, so I tell them that, look, ibadah is ibadah. Ibadah, but to harm someone physically or mentally, that is haram. That is haram. So try not to harm anybody. In tawaf, in sa'i, in jamarat, anywhere, just wait, wait, and wait. If you will not get a seat in bus, you will take another bus. If not, you will walk. So, ya subhanallah, when the bus comes, all hajis, they become crazy. Yes. What happened? What's going on? All people, what happened to them? Yes, the bus is there. Okay, but Yes. The rest of Noel, hajis are sitting behind you. He knows. Yes. That my practice is like this, nothing happens to me, I'm standing there, or I'm sitting there on the ground. When all brothers are done, I say, is there any place? <laughs> if there is any, so I go, otherwise, just go, I will walk. Yes, that's what ibadah means. That's what worship means. So there, ya subhanallah, in tawaf, people are trying to approach hajar aswad To approach hajar aswad They don't look at who is in front of him.
and whom he is going to push an old man a lady a sick person or something like that who cannot hold himself and okay so you went there and you not only touch it but you kiss the hajar as well you got a big reward or you committed a big sin you committed a big sin why you are doing that that is haram and kissing hajar as well yes that is sunnah that is what that is sunnah if you cannot do that just say allah akbar we just call it tilam allah akbar your job is done yes just raise your hand you kissed it got it because as you know that spiritual lights are coming from sha'irullah what spiritual and now that is very easy to understand you have all these rays system and all these layers the system and remote controls and things like that how you are putting a light here from on that very point and how you are getting point there from how light there from you know so all these shahir now look when we are facing qibla do we see qibla do we see baitullah no. yes and still we are 100% sure but 200% sure that we are in connection with the house of allah subhanahu wa taala why the spiritual lights are coming from the house of allah towards our person yes and my sight is going here from to the house of allah subhana get connected to allah subhanahu wa taala it's a connection to allah subhanahu jalallahu albayt alharam qiyam linnas jalallahu albayt alharam qiyam linnas so respected brothers and sisters in islam anyhow inna lillah tisata wa tisina isman man hafizaha dakhala al janna by hafiz prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam means its reflection on your personality and how will be the reflection on your personality allah is rahman ir rahim do you have rahma in your heart for the creature of allah prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says ar rahimun yarhamu ar rahman irhamu man fil ard yarhamukum man fis sama the kind people the nice people rahman will have his mercy on them so have mercy on those who are here on the earth the one who is there in the heaven he will have his mercy on you number 1 number 2 allah subhanahu wa taala he is al ghafur al ghaffar the one who forgives the one who forgives forgives his enemy who is making partner with him for many many years yes who is making partner with him for 100 years and after 100 years when he is unable to move and he said ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu ibn abbas says allah hugs him bi rahma of allah hugs him why because now he is no more the enemy of allah allah has forgiven him in al islam yahdimu ma kana qabla when a disbeliever of 100 year he will accept shahada he will take shahada he will say la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah what about his wrong doing everything is gone yes he is just like a clean paper yes in al islam yahdimu ma kana qablahu respected brothers and sisters in islam so allama salam he has written there that i was uh, yes thinking of reasons and causes why the muslim they are fallen everywhere they have a fall everywhere they have been ruled by others everywhere they are passing through troubles everywhere so i said that i was a sources we have the natural resources all over the muslim world how many natural resources are there yes the big gasoline resources are where say in muslim world yes the major waterways are where in the muslim world so resources allah has given to us but we cannot use it we cannot utilize it we are looking towards other to explore it we are looking towards other to use and to utilize it got it and that's why rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says al mu'min al qawi khair wa habbu ila allah min al mu'min al zaif a strong believer not only in belief in every aspect of his life he must show his strength he must show his power in belief he must be a strong one in actions he must be a strong one in morality and ethics he must be a strong one in politics 
he must be a strong one. In economics and finance, he must be a strong one. Al-Mu'min al-Qawi, khairun wa habbu ilallah min al-Mu'min al Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Salam al-Falan says that at night I was sleeping. And to tell you one thing in this regard, that the guy turned from Shia to Sunni, because he was Shia. But in dream, he saw Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala. I am not going to the differences of Shia and Sunni only as a, as a story. I am telling you that Allah Salaam was a Shia. But he was thinking of Muslim Ummah, why they are passing through trouble. So in dream, he saw Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala. He had written it that I asked Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala. And you know the, the approach of Shia towards Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu ta'ala and Umar. Yes, the wazirain in the ministers of Rasulullah, the advisors of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who were that much connected to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that they were with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Iman. They were with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Badr. They were with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Uhud. They were with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Hudaybiyah. They were with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Fatih Makkah. They were with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Hunayn. They were with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Tabuk. And not only that, they are with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Qabr even. And in Hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says on the Day of Judgment, when Israfil will blow in trumpet, and I will come out of my grave. So I will be holding the hand of Abu Bakr in my one hand and the hand of Umar in my other hand. What a lucky people they both are. I was telling these brothers there, yes, when these millions and millions of people passing by the sacred grave of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and saying salat and salam to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at the same time they are saying salat and salam to Abu Bakr and then to Omar. So I told them that Muhammad is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the messenger of Allah. Subhanahu. But what a lucky people these two guys are. That everyone who is saying salam to Muhammad, he is saying salam to Abu Bakr. Assalamu alaikum ya Amir al-Mu'mineen. Assalamu alaikum ya Khalifat Rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum ya Asani Rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum ya Sahib Rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum ya Sahib Ahu Filghar. So anyhow, my respected brothers and sisters, Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala, Allah mar salam said that I ask him, Anta arhamu ummati Muhammad bi ummati Muhammad. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself says that the kind one towards my Ummah after me is Abu Bakr. And that's why. Just think about that. When Abu Bakr accepted Imam, and as you know he was the first one who accepted the message of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, when Abu Bakr accepted Islam and Iman, at that time, cash, not properties, not industry, cash in his hand, it was 40,000 dinar. How much? 40,000 40, golden dinar. Think of the value of 40,000 golden dinar nowadays. Yes. And he spent all these 40,000 for Islam and Muslims. Wherever Rasulullah sallallahu needed money, he said, Abu Bakr, said, sir. Said, okay. Yes. When Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa migrated to Medina, and he was looking for a place to build a masjid. And where Masjid Nabawi is standing now, that was uh, to uh, belong to two yatama, to two teenagers, and they were yatim and orphan, Sahal and Suhail. Their name was Sahal and Suhail. So Prophet Sallallahu says that my she camel sat here for the first time. That's uh, my she camel's choice by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to have my masjid here. But this place belongs to. So the young teenager they came forward and they said. This is ours. Prophet Sallallahu said, I am going to build a masjid here. So they said, O the Messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, that's for masjid. That's what the fuck. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, no, Yatama should not do that. You are underage. You are underage, number one. And number two, I am going to build a masjid from my own money. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi did not have any single dinar in his pocket. Yes. So its price, it was evaluated by 40 dinar at that time. How many? 40 dinar at that time. Prophet ﷺ looked at Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr? It means that the pocket of Abu Bakr was the pocket of Rasulullah. The money of Abu Bakr was the money of Rasulullah. Because Prophet ﷺ referred to, I want to build up a masjid from my own pocket. By my own money. He did not have any money in his pocket. But the pocket of Abu Bakr was the pocket of Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Abu Bakr, just give them 40 B sets. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Take it. 
respected brothers and sisters in Islam. Anyhow, Sir Salam says that I ask Abu Bakr Anta, Arham Ummat Muhammad bi Ummat Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Maza hadafa lahum? Maza hadafa lahum? Or maza waqa'a bihim? What happened to them? Why they are falling day by day? They are falling down day by day. They are going from bad to worst in their conditions and situations. And what's the way out? So Abu Bakr said, يَكُونُونَ كَذَلِكَ مَا لَمْ يَعْمَلُوا بِسُورَةِ الْإِخْلَاسِ They will be in the same way, in the same condition. As long as they have not practiced the Surah Al-Ikhlas. Every Muslim kid even, he knows Surah Al-Ikhlas, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ اللَّهُ سَمَدٌ لَمْ يَرِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَوْ كُفُوَانَ حَدٌ People of Mecca came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sif لَنَا رَبَّكَ Sif لَنَا رَبَّكَ Our gods and our idols, we can tell you about their biodata or their biography, their lineage, their sajara. But you are calling us towards your Lord. Can you tell us whose father that Lord of yours is? Whose son that Lord of yours is? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qul, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell them, Hu Allah! This is the proper answer. That he is Allah, what are you talking about? Asking about his son and father? When he is Allah, Allah means he does not have neither a father, nor a son. Full who Allah and Ahadun, that's further elaboration. That he is the only one. He is the only one. Allah has Samad, he is the eternal. He is in no need of anybody. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. No son, no father. Wa lam yakullahu kufuan ahad. No equal he has. So now, this surah is related to aqeedah, to faith. There is no any concept of practice there. That's a faith. But Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala said, Malam yahmalu bi surah al-ikhlas. As long as they have now practiced surah al-ikhlas. So our salam says that I ask him, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, this is faith. Where is practice there in? He said, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Takhallaku bi akhlaq Allah. How the character of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He said, that one character of Allah mentioned in Surah Al-Ikhlas is Wahda, Oneness. What? Oneness. So as long as the Muslim Ummah does not have unity and oneness, they must have the reflection. Number one. Number two, Allah Samad, that He doesn't need anybody. Allah, that as long as they do not have that much economical, financial and political and technological and scientific strength and power, that they do not need anybody else. Allah Samad, Lam Yalid wa Lam Yulad, Nafyul Mujanasa. Nafyul Mujanasa. They should not make the disbelievers their friend against the Muslims. Yes, as far as simple friendship is concerned, that is not prohibited. We will be having our neighbors. They are non Muslim. We must show kindness to them. Because Ibn Masood, Radi Allah Ta'ala, he asked the Messenger of Allah, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, O the Messenger of Allah, how I will come to know that I am a good man or a bad man? I am a good man. Arabid, the criterion. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave him, Ibn Masood, إِذَا قَالَ جِيرَانُكَ قَدْ أَحْسَنْتَ فَقَدْ أَحْسَنْتَ وَإِذَا قَالُوا قَدْ أَسَاتَ فَقَدْ أَسَاتَ When you are neighbors. And neighbors are general. Yes? You cannot specify the Muslims only. There will be Muslims and there are non-Muslims. When your neighbor said that you are a good man, you are a good man. When they said that you are a bad man, you are a bad man. So when they will say you are a good man, if you are cooperative, if you are kind towards them, if you are not, how they will come to know? So Allah Samad, Lam Yalid Walam Yulad, Walam Yakun Lahu Kufuan Ahad. So respected brothers and sisters in Islam, my point was that the Khalaku be akhlaqillah. How we will get in touch with Allah? So I was telling these brothers in Hadith class, in Usul Hadith, in methodology of Hadith, that you must get in touch with Shahirullah. With what? With, shah- with the signs of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has so many signs. Everywhere of fikulli shay'in lahu ayatun. Tadullu ala anna. Every single leaf of a tree is the sign of Allah. Therefore you can find out that this is Allah. To tell you one thing. That uh, one of my friends. He studied medical in Russia. At that time when communism was on its peak. Yes. But he was very much committed Muslim. So I told him that Dr. Saab. I was thinking of you that you have lost your iman. But you are very common, because communism, you know that. Yes, no concept of God. So, he said, actually, a surgeon, if he does not believe in Allah, so I think that he is not a surgeon. I said, what do you mean? He said, when you are doing surgery, everywhere in human body you will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
In every cell, you will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that only Allah can do that. Nobody else. So every leaf, fi kulli shayin lahu ayatun, tadullu ala annahu. But anyhow, important signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are four in number. Number one, Baitullah, the house of Allah. And that's why looking at the house of Allah, you are tired. That's very hot weather. Rush is very big. Just sit on such a corner or such an angle. You are looking at the house of Allah. Prophet said, Annazaru ila baytillahi ibadah. Looking at the house of Allah is also ibadah. Looking at the house of Allah. And in a hadith, Prophet says, Inna Allah yanzilu fi kulli yawmin wa layla ma'a wa ishreena rahma ala baytih. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day and night in 24 hours he is sending 120 rahmas and mercies to his house. Sittun liman yatufun wa arba'un liman yusallun wa ishroon liman yaakufun 60 for those who are making tawaf 40 for those who are praying dear and 20 for those who are sitting, sitting and looking at the house of Allah with love that this is the sign of Allah. This is a sign of Allah. Subhan- this house is directly connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are in love with Allah. That's why we are looking at. Otherwise, the stones of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are from the mountains of Makkah. No, but that is the sign of Allah. And as you know, that sign has its own dignity, its own honor and respect. Red light, what? Red light on an intersection. On it, red light. Yes, you can put one red light at your house also. Yes, but you will, you will never stop there because that red light does not represent anything. But that red light, just go and cross it and the police is there. Yes, you will have in recession $500. Yes, so you will be furthermore in recession. So it has a dignity, it has a respect. Sign, it represents something. So Baitullah, number one, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Here is the sign of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why Allah says, وَمَنْ يُتِغِرْ رَسُولُ فَقَدْ أَطَعَ اللَّهِ Whosoever obeys Muhammad, he obeyed Allah actually. Because he is the messenger of Allah, he is the sign of Allah. Number three, Kitab Allah, the book of Allah, the Holy Quran, this is the sign of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number four, Salatullah, the prayer, that is the sign of Allah, لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلَمٌ وَعَلَمُ الْإِيمَانِ أَصَّلَةً so inshallah, even though recession is there, but still alhamdulillah, Allah has given you a lot. Yes, because people, to tell you one thing, Ramadan is coming. Ramadan is coming. As you know, that according to all four schools of jurisprudence, we cannot spend the zakat money in masajid. We cannot spend it in maqbaras and cemetery. We must give it to the poor and to the needy people. Tu khadu min aghniyaihim wa turaddu ila fuqaraihim. It must be given tamlik is shark. Tamlik is shark. Only in Hanafiya there is one harim. He said it, that under the green of necessity sometimes you can spend it somewhere in such like things. And that is Imam Saraksi. But no any alim has given fatwa based on the details given by Imam Saraksi. Even though Imam Saraksi, he is a well known alim of Fiqh Hanafiya. He has written al Mafsut in 20 volumes. al Mafsut in Islamic law? In how many volumes? One volume like this. So 20 volumes. And where he wrote it? Yes, he was not making compromises on the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was saying wrong to the wrong doing of the Khalifa. He was saying wrong to the wrong doing of Khalifa in his khutbah everywhere. So the Khalifa did not put him in jail. He put him in a dry well. He put him where? Well. In a dry well. Yes, he was imprisoned there in a dry well. And the Khalifa asked him that you are a big alim, but you are against me. This is political punishment. Yes, but anyhow, your respect is respect. So what can I do for you? <laughs> what can I do for you? So Imam Saraksi, he never asked him that, give me this or give me this facility or class A, B, C, or as the case may be. He said that if you will allow my students to come to the well, so they will be sitting here, I want to convey the same thing to them. Yes, so the students, they used to come early in the morning, sitting around the well in a bucket, they used to put their questions regarding certain issues in Islamic law. Take it dear. And Imam Saraksi, therefrom he was writing the answers. So their 20 volume books is compiled like this. His students compiled there. So anyhow, respected brothers and sisters in Islam, regarding zakat money, 
My own suggestion is, Brother Ashraf knows, he's a brother of mine, Brother Amir Bashar, he's our president. So, he knows, uh, all of you who come to our masjid once a while, so I do make announcement in Ramadan, especially because brothers and sisters are paying their zakat in Ramadan. So I say that, brothers, we have come from very poor countries. Pakistan is poor. Afghanistan is poor. poor. Bangladesh is rich. <laughs> yes. India is poor. Yes. Egypt is poor. Are rich. Yes, Husni Mubarak. Husni Mubarak is rich. Yes. Yes. Yes or not? Bashar al-Assad is rich. Yes. So anyhow, the general public, they are poor. They are our cousins. They are our relatives. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if you will give your zakat to your relatives, hiya ala al-fakiri sadaqa wa ala zi qarawatim sadaqatan. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if you will give to a strange fakir, that will be only one charity. If you will give to your own fakir of your own family, you will be having a double reward. So I say that if you are not giving them support from your own pocket, so you should send them your own zakat. Why you are talking about uh, your tax return? Yes, that if I will pay it here to a masjid, so they will give me their receipt and or send me a letter in the end and I will put it with my tax return and that is exemption. Got it? No. Think of the day of judgment. That is number one. And number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you a lot. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says that whosoever he has the ability to perform hajj, he should not be delay that. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says if he is going to die and he died, nobody knows when he is going to die. He is delaying his hajj. And he died. So Prophet says, La ubali bihi yamutu Yahudiyan aw Nasraniyan. I don't care that he is going to die as a Jew or as a Christian. Because the first thing the Jew and Christian draw from their deen that was Hajj. Even though Hajj was first in their deen as well. But the first ever thing they dropped it practically, that was what? Hajj. So Rasulullah said that this guy did the same practice. So that's why he said, La ubali bihi yamutu Yahudiyan. Our Nasraniyan, and that's why all four school of jurisprudence, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, and Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Rahimahumullah, they are of the view that in al Hajja, Fardun al al Fawr, La al al Tarahi. Fardun al al Fawr, La al al Tarahi. You should not delay it. Do it as soon as possible. Even Abu Hanifa, Rahimahullah, even though that is not Mazhab. There is not Mazhab. But for, for his person and for his close associate, his fatwa was. That if somebody has that much money, that he can either do his marriage or he can perform hajj. So Abu Hanifa says, Rahimullah, in normal circumstances, marriage is sunnah. Marriage is, but hajj is faraz, so he must give priority to faraz, not to sunnah. But we are talking about sunnah first. That let's do this first to put ourselves in trouble. That's a quick mire, then you will never be able to perform hajj. Oh, but because all the money is gone. Yes, I did a big walima in Sheraton or Hilton and things like that. Yes, so what about next year? Oh, Alhamdulillah, so I got a baby. Now I'm taking care of that. Yes, subhanallah, what will happen to you? So respected brothers and sisters in Islam, inshallah, I am uh, very much sure that every one of you who is able to perform hajj, and even those who have performed their first hajj. Imam Malik, rahimahullah, one of the four school of uh, jurisprudence imam, he says, based up on a, upon a hadith, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, sahahdu jisma, wa wasa'atu alayhi rizqa, summa lam yafid ilayya fi khamsati awam, la mahroomun. Imam Malik says, every five years hajj is becoming wajib. Every five years, faraz is only once in lifetime, but every five years it becomes wajib because Rasulullah said that Allah says, Hadith Hadith Qudsi, that one sahahtu jisma, one who has been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jism health, and he has ma'isha as well, finance and economics is stable as well. Summa lam yafid ilayya fi khamsati awam. And he did not visit me, means my house in Mecca in five years, la mahrumun, he would be deprived of the mercy of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So respected brothers and sisters in Islam, anyhow, maybe you have made the intention. But to tell you one thing, brother Ashraf knows, I have nothing to do with the hajj business. <laughs> Back home I was there, in, as brother Ashraf said, that I was member of parliament. And at that time the government was insisting upon me to accept a ministerial post, ministerial post, ministerial I said... I, actually, the people of my area, they pushed me to that. <laughs> to contest the election, I contested and I got it. 
Yes, so then the government, they were insisting upon me, because they were of the view, I am not a big man, I am a small student of Quran and Sunnah, but they were of the view, if he will be in our ministerial cabinet, so we will be having a lot of support of his disciples. That everywhere in Pakistan he has disciples, they will be supporting our government. So, they used to ask me to accept the ministerial post, and especially the Wadaratul Hajj, Ministry of Hajj. Ministry of Hajj. So I said that I am not going to accept any ministerial post and especially this ministry. Yes, so the government uh, responsible people, the Prime Minister, he said, why? You are a alim of Quran and Sunnah and people do put their trust in you as Mufti and Qazi and as a political leader and if you will accept, this will be a good service to Fardin of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I said that, look, Hajj is actually jihad and jihad being difficulties will be there. Even though Saudi government, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. They are doing a lot. They are doing a lot. And they are doing on behalf of us. On behalf of the entire Muslim Ummah. Yes, uh, to tell you the truth, the political approach is something else. But as far as the services of Haramain is concerned, the Saudi family, they have done a lot. And they have been doing a lot. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. So respected brothers and sisters in Islam, anyhow, I told them that actually Hajj is Jihad. In Jihad, there will be hardship and difficulties. And people, they are very emotional. When they will be having, and as you know, from Pakistan, this year, 175,000 Hujjaj Kiram will come. And that's big Islamic country, and so many people are coming. Sometime, yes, the, the, the requirements and the demands are a lot, and quota or the limit is that much. So then the Prime Minister do ask King Abdullah, can you please help us to give us 10,000 more or something like that? So sometimes they give it. Yes, just 10,000 more. So anyhow, I said that these hundreds of thousands of people, difficulties will be there. And when they become upset, yes, because they have not taken food in proper time, or transport was not there, so in the house of Allah, they are making a bad dua against that minister. Ke <laughs> Allah is ka beda ghart kar So that's what I'm telling you, that this business, somebody has to do that. Somebody has to do, but if someone can avoid that type of business, he should sell somewhere the garbage or beans or something like that, but that business, because difficulty is there and Haji become upset, so he makes a bad dua in the house of Allah. And as you know, in these maqamat mutabarraka, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq, whatever I have said it for the sake of Allah. I don't have any other purpose but only to please Allah. And once again, I am very much thankful to Brother Ashraf because in such like circumstances, in such like atmosphere, if somebody is trying to have a alim or a teacher somewhere to teach them Quran and Sunnah, something in the light of Quran and Sunnah, that's a blessing of Allah. So, and that's why sometimes I uh, tell my students, that back home in Pakistan, the students are thankful to their teacher. The students are thankful, thankful to, that he is teaching them. But I told them that in secular, but secular. in secular and material world, I am thankful to you people that you are coming either from universities or from college or from your job and you are studying Quran and Sunnah. And I told them that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give me a lot for every single class of yours, I will be paying hundred dollar to eight students that you are coming to study tafsir. This is for hadith class. This hundred dollar is for fiqh. This hundred dollar is for Islamic jurisprudence. And this hundred dollar is for Islamic philosophy. So if you will be having five classes every day, so you'll be taking five hundred dollars from Sheikh Qazi. <laughs> but I'm sorry I don't have it, otherwise I would have done it. Because we belong to Allah. All that which is in our pocket that belongs to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to give services to his deen and to give services to Muslims and to please him and his messenger as well. وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه محمد وعلى أصحاب الجماعين برحمة الله الرحيم. Yes, Bismillah. I was, I was thinking. I mean, if there's, if, for example, if somebody like, if gets a twenty-five percent from the taxes and send the twenty-five percent to this relative and then send everything else to another location. I mean, let's assume there are organizations that can take care of What? Whatever good you can do, that's good. Because you can get 25% more. Yes. And then we'll never have to send it to their relatives. But mean, people are not sending. Actually, that's the case. Oh, that's the <laughs> Yes. Do it Once one brother came to me and he said that, Sheikh, if we are stealing from taxes and tax department, from revenue department, that is allowed here, 
آئی سیڈ المسلم آئند شور ہوتے ہیں ایسے جنرل رول وٹ ایور شرٹ اینڈ کنڈیشن آف دی گورمنٹ از یو آر باؤنڈ ٹو ڈو دیٹ اینڈ ٹو فلفل دیٹ یس اینڈ آئی ٹوٹ ان دا سیم تھنگ ایف یو ہیو اسٹولن سم تھنگ فرام اے مسلم ہی ول بی بلیمنگ یو بٹ فرام نان مسلم ہی ول بی بلیم یور فیتھ That is hundred, no, no, I am telling you another thing. So, he said, but actually you know that this government, they are giving that money to our enemies and they are killing Muslims and things like that. So, I said that, brother, I am very much sure that you have stolen for the last few years. <laughs> he said, yes, I have done it with the same intention. So, my next question, but how much of that saved money you sent to those brothers and sisters who got killed, or to their kids? So he became quiet. I said, how shaitan is misleading us. Got it? So if they are sending that, that's good. But they are not. Yeah, because it is, it is taxable, right? Mm-hmm. And then to some of the taxes back, we can additional 25%. That is good. Yes, brother. I think that every side of being to the best of my knowledge, I try to. I try to my best. جزاكم الله خيرا وبارك الله فيكم وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين برحمتك يا رحمة الله